Hi, and welcome to a brand new video. Now, in my last video, I talked about National Science Bowl and a few tips, and I also briefly covered energy, but I want to kind of dive more into this, especially because with the other topics such as physics, chemistry, biology, earth science, you have someone specific for that typically, or at least what I've experienced, and they tip, uh, like do uh, like they um study a lot they do um read books they watch videos but energy is kind of uh, like a little different because of two things i talked about last time you have the doe labs and these are a set of 16 labs that um do a lot of scientific research and it's not just an energy we just call them the department of energy labs but um, DOE, but um, they do a lot of other different things. For example, in the time I'm filming this, lots of labs are working on COVID-19 research. And then we also have other types of questions, such as natural resource questions. So this would include things like, um, uh, is solar versus wind sustainable? And so it would compare resources. But also something that I like found kind of unique about National Science Bowl is also asked about locations. And some uh, this would include something like um, which one of the United States produces the most wind energy or it could be which country produces the most um, solar energy which one uses the most natural resources or something like that so there uh, I find these two types of questions to be um, what you find in energy either DOE labs or something about energy resources or in comparing these natural resources and this will probably become more prominent as climate change becomes more significant in our daily lives so I would expect these questions to also increase along with these ones so probably split pretty evenly so now that we've kind of discussed what types of questions we see in these energy NSB questions Let's talk about some tips. First, I'm going to discuss those DOE labs. Now on the website of National Science Bowl, and this is a valid resource, don't get me wrong, is website. DOE website for the different national labs. And um, I put these uh, all these um, labs in the in the comment section of my previous video, and also the comments uh, uh, this description section of this video. If you want to just check out those links. Now, personally, for me, I'm not really a, re a reader type of person because those websites tend to have different articles on the research, and yes, that's helpful to first get a grasp, but um, for me personally, that isn't effect uh, isn't one hundred percent effective. Or when I'm first learning about the lab, I prefer other methods and then coming to the website for more details. So some other uh, um resource that I found is YouTube channels. Most national uh most of these national labs have a YouTube channel. Um, some uh one of them that I just remember for some reason is um Lawrence Livermore. It has a really nice video based on the different research that's doing and it also has some of those recap videos like 10 top things that um this lab did so i just find the youtube channel to be the first place i go learn a little bit about the lab and then go to the websites you can also go on to social media and every lab probably updates things that they've been doing and you can also, um, sub uh, if you um, want to, you can like um, subscribe to their Facebooks and social other social media platform so that you can get those updates regularly and just kind of get uh, get information as you're just scrolling through social media. 
And beside just th things produced from the labs themselves, we also have DOE producing a lot of resources. These include a lot of uh, documentation of, for example, um, what a one a one or two page summary of what every lab did. That's typically an, a, like when you're running a business, a business has to um publish like their financial statement. So it's kind of something like that, except for it's not related to finance, it's related to what they've been doing. And this is just a really helpful documentation because it's really short and gives a nice summary. But you also need to make sure whether it's updated because if you're competing for, let's say, the regional competition, information is going to be a lot different than the national competition. So uh, DOE provides a lot of good resources, and I bet that you can find a lot of videos of other people who tried to do a summary. I know DOE posted a video, I think in 2018, which did a one-minute summary for each lab, which got into around an 18 minute video with an introduction and a conclusion. For natural resource questions, um, obviously the DOE labs are going to touch on this. And also when you um, do your research, I think particularly biology and earth and space, um, they also cover these um, a little bit related to natural resources. So even like um biology and slash life science plus earth and space these will talk about um uh, uh, natural resources climate change and things like that so just pay attention when you're reading about that but that's uh you need more than that because biology and earth and space um, they're going to also focus on their specific topics, like biology is going to focus on cells and genetics, and so it's going to talk about um, like the different planets, geology, and things like that. So uh, we also need another resource in order to talk about these natural resources. So I mm, just probably recommend just searching on the internet about the different sustainable resources. So I think just a simple research related to sustainable resources. And there is a lot of nice documentation. I believe that the DOE uh, the either uh, the DOE or some other place also posted an, a really sh brief around 80 page document related to all the different types of these resources. So looking at those documentations related to the different energy documentations. And when it just comes to these, it's important to first learn about the different fuels. So this would in include like solar, wind, coal, etc. And not just knowing what they are, but where they are used. And by this, I mean location and industry. So, our, for example, um, the solar wind is probably not right now. Um, used more frequently than let's say coal in the transportation industry. So uh, just learn about where they're used and uh, um, in terms of industry and location. And also you want to kind of know more details about it. So for example, um, you might want to uh, know that uh, like where solar, uh, who first thought of the idea of solar wind or where solar wind produced and these uh, it may not seem significant but these little details could help boost your score when it comes to those difficult energy questions maybe you want to research that i know that um, when it comes to solar energy a lot of people talk about photosynthesis and this would connect back to those doe labs let me just add details to the list here. 
details. So this actually connects back to the DOE labs. If, for example, if solar uh, energy talks about photosynthesis and a DOE lab is seeing whether or not they can use solar energy to perform photosynthesis, that's the connection that you can make. And typically, um, when you are studying a topic, making those connections make it easier for your brain to remember. So just making connections. So just kind of overall with the natural resource section is really important to just do research on the different types of energy. And just a few last things. They also like talking about AC and DC, which is probably covered in physics. So just make sure to talk about uh, just research things like that. And also when it comes to energy, this is mostly depend on the strategy of your team, but I found that it's really effective if you split it up between the members of your team because energy is really vast. As you can see, the natural resources, yeah, maybe one person can cover that if you have a specialized energy person, but the DOE labs, there's just so much. And with current information, it's, uh, um, it's too much to cram uh, at the end. And so what I recommend is that, let's say this is now, and this is the competition. I'd recommend spending like these first few thing, uh, first few weeks studying your topic and do, uh, doing some basic practice. This period would be more intense practice. And then here in this last time period, make sure to uh, research energy. And the reason I put energy last is because obviously DOE is doing new things every day. And these questions, energy questions are going to be on the updated research. So you need to make sure you study them updated. So hopefully this video was helpful in um, knowing, uh, helping your team understand how to study energy for NSP. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, leave any comments or questions you may have in the comment section below, and hit the notification bell for uh, to get more videos like this.